Yeah, Chris Brown and uh, the K Mac Kevin McCall situation. I mean, you're looking at two guys that's absolutely the same. They both share it, folks. Now, they had a song they did before, uh, Deuces. I forgot what it was called. But this, all this stuff they argued about, y'all, it's like four, five years ago. You know, they been had this discussion. They been had words and all this stuff. So it's like all this stuff coming up now over stuff four years ago, it shows you how petty both people are in this situation. Chris Brown and Kevin McCall are exactly the same. They are the same person. Same personalities. Everything. They act out. They don't know how to process anything of change and how to deal with situations the right way. They always do things the wrong way. They ain't try to go back and be like, oh, I'm sorry. They're impulsive people. They're both talented. Don't get that wrong. But with it comes a like a psychoticness on both sides. Chris, his passion for music and dancing and his energy. And, and then he has these tantrums like a child. And so does Kevin McCall. It's the same thing. When something don't go his way, it's tantrums. But when it comes to making music and making songs, they're very good at it, working together. But they're like two alpha males. That relationship was never going to blend and make, and make anything happen. And during this time, you know, uh, Deuces was actually Kevin's song. You know, Kevin wrote it. So... Anyway, uh, Chris Brown's manager, Tina, Tina Davis at the time, no relation, and she came through and uh, was like, man, you know, like, that is a nice song, you know, and Chris was like, yeah, yeah, dude, yeah, that is tight, and they were cool, and he was like, listening to it, and while he was working with it, you know, he just, bow, bow, like, man, and I think he hit him up a couple of days later, like, mm, man, that's, I need to get on that. And so what they did was Chris Brown wrote the rap part that Kevin did. Like Tiger and Chris Brown, they both was like help structuring the rap poet portion. And he was like, yeah, you just rap. We're going to have like a rap part on there. You can come in there like you conversating. And Chris Brown wrote that rap part out for, for Kevin. But Kevin already had the lyrics written out for the song that Chris sung. And even though he written it, he's not mad that he did it because Chris Brown and Tiger being on the record just make it epic. So when that happened, you know, and then Deuces blew up and Chris Brown was getting all this attention and praise and people looked at Kevin, you know, as a rapper. An up and coming rap artist, Kevin McCall, you know, and he was signed to the label with Chris Brown. And then Tina started, you know, trying to maneuver her way in because her thing is she wanted to manage too. So his publishing deals, everything he got, he got through Chris Brown. Chris Brown gets a piece of his publishing, he gets a piece of everything. Everything was done through Chris Brown. And that's how she did it because she wasn't his manager. So she was trying to strong arm Chris to get a bigger position so that, you know, she would have some say. So it, it's a whole big mess. But a lot of stuff was happening to where they had the song uh, Strip. And, you know, Kevin again, you know, uh, when they wrote Strip and everything and Chris coming gets involved and and Strip was a hit song and the, and the label liked it and even his manager Tina was like yeah this is a good song we should put it out Chris was like nah I think we should hold off on Strip and in the studio you know he's like cause I want people to think like we're a group 
like Levert, what he said, like Levert, Sweat, and Johnny Gill. He's like, yeah, see, I don't want people to start thinking we're a group like that. So, um, you know, let's just hold back on that. And the studio put pressure on him, like, look, we need a video, you know, for Strip. You know, we really like the song, you know, it's getting, it's going to get some spins. It's a nice song. You need this out now. So, then, you know, concessions was made to put out Strip. So, during this process, he really wasn't feeling putting out Strip. So, he's trying to distance himself from Kevin. Chris is, you know. Mainly because a lot of people were saying, you know, Kevin McCall, yeah, the way he could sing, because they did a little performance on the show when they did Deuces, and, and he's like, this is my man Kev, and Kev went out there singing, and Chris got a little jealous, you know, and so when Kevin was being pushed to the background, and people was, like, hating on Chris Brown, saying Chris ain't doing this, Chris ain't doing that, and then his manager it's feeding Kevin this information like, yeah, he want to kill your album and he wants to do this and that. And Tina, she's doing all this, you know, to cause him most of the rift between Kevin and Chris. So even when he saw Chris at the studio, you know, later on, he didn't bring all this up to Chris Brown. He, he didn't take him to the side. He was just like, no, nah, I'm going to see what he do and see how it play out. So, all this stuff is going on, and he decided, well, I'm going to do my own thing. He started doing work with uh, other artists, and then Kiki Palmer and Kevin McCall, just like Chris Brown, they all have friends that, like Frank Ocean and all these guys who are, who are either gay or gay adjacent. But he comes from the choir, so he started doing some like, work, like with the choir stuff and Chris Brown like look dude you don't need to be doing that stuff you know what I'm saying like that was dumb like why would you do that song with them and why are you doing this because you're going to go into a whole nother realm and they're going to put you in and you're going to mess your money up and he did the song working with Kiki Palmer and he loved it and Kiki Palmer is you know the way she is she's gay adjacent too so, a lot of the friends that even Chris Brown hang around him, and some of them, they seem to be very adjacent with the homosexual people. And that's, so when you talk about Kevin McCall, he's, you know, gay and all this stuff, it's like, hey, I'm not here to judge the man off his sexuality. I don't even know it. All I do know... <laughs> Is both of them have feminine ways, and your your affiliation is just as about as worse as his. If that's the case, because you didn't hung around a lot of gay people, so to make that an issue with Kevin McCall, you know, it's like, what are you doing? What are you talking about? But that's how they do. They just blurt stuff out. So he called him a bum, you know, insulting him all the time, you know, insulting Kevin, knowing Kevin's going to respond and talking about so we can meet up, we can see this and this and that. And people was like, where did that come from? Why did he go so hard? Because four years ago, Chris e. Brown, and he gave, he got on the phone with Chris and he checked Chris on the phone, where he called checking Chris, because Chris was talking to him pretty strong. And he got real hard with Chris, like, look, dude, I'm I'm real, we could do this, you know, and it was just not the way to talk to Chris Brown, and Chris Brown, like, did this guy just talk to me like that? <laughs> and Chris had, he couldn't do nothing at the time because of the case he had, so Chris is like, I got a total line right now, I got a lot of stuff on my hands with these cases, I don't need to go to court, so... You know, but I, he wanted to choke, dude. <laughs> but nevertheless, you know, nothing came out of it. So now, here we come now, years later, here come this subject all over again. It's like, what in the world? Now, if y'all want to go read all that stuff that he's talking about on Twitter, that's fine. I ain't finna do all that. 
I'm not finna go, well, then he said this, then he said that. It's done. <laughs> All that stuff they talking about, getting Tyrese, trying to take his. Kevin McCall is just as petty as Chris Brown. Both guys are at fault. If you don't want to work with Kevin McCall, you don't have to. You ain't talked to him in like three years. So why would he even hold any weight? Why would you even care? Do you hold his contract still? I doubt it. And if you do, let him go. What do what difference? Why would you hold somebody you ain't trying to work with no more? Let him go. Let him go. Kevin McCall. Is this your way to try to get on? Is this what you want to do? Is this your avenue now? This is your is your comeback. Find a way, get smart, get some management, get some shows, and get your money. Both y'all, get y'all money. This stuff ain't gonna get your money. All this stuff is gonna get you is social media attention for five mm -hmm. minutes until somebody else Kanye do something stupid. <laughs> that be it. Kanye say something else, this stuff is forgotten about. And then all of this was for what? Then y'all run into each other, then what? Somebody got to do something now. Because it's the camera people watching now. Everybody got a cell phone. You don't attack them, then it's, you ain't real. See how y'all put yourselves in these crazy boxes? That you can't get out of because the way you felt one day ain't how you going to feel six months from now. Because it really ain't that important. And this is what Pac was trying to relay to people in his interview when after hit him up was dropped and how much stress he was under because of hit him up and all the stuff he was doing and everybody's like, man, Biggie them over there, man, you want to get him? You know, it's like, like he like, dude, it's just because they, I'm like every time he come around, it ain't like I'm finna keep rushing him. Every time I see him, you know, like we got to go to war. Like, dude, you know, like, I might not be in the mood. Same thing. But to the fans, they don't understand that. They understand the song. So in the song, you better be in the mood. That's what we banking on, you being in the mood. We betting that you in the mood. They want to spend their money to see you in the mood. So anyway, that's it with that situation. I'm out. It's your boy Carcino. Follow the playlist. Follow me on Twitter at Carcino and Instagram. I'm learning how to use that now. I'll put up a couple of pictures from the uh, the event. I'm out.